This is um, Macmaster4014 here, and um, today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a program called um, WinX HD Video Converter for Mac. Quite a long title, um, but anyway, um, if you've been asked to review this program, I've been given a review copy, and now of course um, I'm going to be um, making a fairly honest review, uh, so I'm not just going to say it's really amazing because I've been given a copy of it for um, reviewing. Uh, so anyway, it's going to be a giveaway at the end of the video, um, you don't need to subscribe or anything, just if you'd like to subscribe, you if you um, just if you want. So basically, you just comment anything, and you're entered. It's that simple. Uh, and also, um, uh, it will help if you um, like some other of my videos. It's not really any point liking this video, I guess, unless if you want to, of course. Um, so anyway, back to the review. Uh, so here is um, uh, basically the program. This is all there is. Um, all, all that you can see. Uh, so this is a fairly simple program. Uh, it's just designed to be um, for people who don't really know much about um, converting video, because if you do know much about converting video, you probably use a program like Adobe Media Encoder, uh, uh, Apple, um, Apple Compressor, um, something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, so um, I'll just show you a few of the features. So, um, op so uh, there are a few things and options. Um, anyway, the layout of this program, uh, the layout is quite good, I think, um, but it could be improved. Um, like for example, all these buttons and everything, uh, they could be made more simple. Um, and um, so basically, if you want to export, imp no, um, import a video to this, uh, you just drag and drop a video here. So this video is going to upload to my other channel, but didn't. So you drag a file here. And um, this is fairly simple. You can't actually play the video here. Uh, try pressing, clicking it, pressing space or anything doesn't work. But you can actually... Um, uh, shorten the video. So, for example, if you only want um, to upload the middle of it, uh, then you can do that. If you want to just drag and drop these things, you can take screenshots. Uh, not really anything amazing. Now, um, there'll be some clip information here, uh, audio information, and everything. It's not really important, um, um, but anyway, it's quite good to know uh, instead of just using Git Info or something like that. Uh, so, anyway, uh, there are a few options here. Uh, you can import to MP3, etc. Um, and also another way of importing it, you can import a YouTube video here. Uh, so, um, uh, do you want to? Um, yes. Um, so you just copy and paste the URL here from quite a few video sharing sites. Click OK and it imports it, and downloads and imports the video. Uh, so um, you can import and you can export some um, converts to a few different formats. Um, like um, MP4, AVI, MPEG, uh, HDTS, um, HD, Windows Movie, Video, um, MOV, HD, YouTube, etc. Uh, so there's quite a few things to choose. You can upload, to, uh, you can export a lot of cell phones. So basically, um, all these profiles and things, um, they change things like the resolution and um, also the codec. Um, there is H.264. Uh, and by the way, this program, uh, I think, it isn't very cheap, but um, the possibly the reason of the price is so that they can pay for licenses for H.264, etc. Um, because those licenses for the patents, etc. aren't cheap. Uh, so anyway, um, so you can change frame rate, uh, some simple stuff here like the bit rate. Uh, it's best to keep that around 3,000, minimum 6,000. Now a feature, um, which is quite annoying, but there isn't, is VBR2 pass. Now, with VBR2 pass, basically, you can make tiny file sizes with amazing quality. Just to make like maybe a 10 minute video, 720p, that's about 200 megabytes. And it would normally be a gigabyte, all the same quality. Um, so it's annoying that it isn't, that, um, isn't supported. Uh, so, um, as um, all these different profiles here, uh, so it's probably best to use just HD video, MP4, something like that. Uh, you can increase the volume here, uh, amplify the volume. Uh, this, uh, uh, I think you, for music you can change formats, codex MP3, but it's mostly just AAC everywhere, um, which is um, quite a normal codec, almost everything supports it. Uh, so um, the resolution here, actually, um, if I cl uh, click here, um, it's you can choose from 720p, 480p, uh, and uh, or 1080p. 
So just select, select uh, 720p. So there's video quality here, bitrate 6000 kilobytes, so quite good. Um, video frame rate, output formats. Um, you can customize all this stuff. Uh, just click start um, once you've dragged a, um, a file in here. So it's that simple. We'll just show you the options. Um, so you can change some of the profiles here. Uh, uh, just some um, mobile phones and Apple um, mobile devices. As uh, so audio language, um, now uh, I don't think this is really major thing. And also you can change the target file file name. Uh, so uh, there isn't really anything else um, except uh, this um, output folder though. So it's quite useful to change to not spam your um, movies folder with many different folders because it creates separate folder for each um, profile, like HD YouTube, HD MP4, all that's quite annoying. Uh, so, um, uh, when you click start, um, it does take a while to render, but anyway, I'll show you the times. So, um, there are two files here um, that are used. So, in Winux, one of them, well, the bit rate was already um, very low. Uh, I'll show you the original and um, the later version later. Now, the quality is um, better, noticeably better, in when encoded by Adobe Media Encoder though. Uh, so um, Adobe Media Encoder is quite normal program. I think all, all Adobe programs use it. Uh, and um, uh, I think it is a um, free program. I'm not sure about that though. Um, but anyway, it's included with a few Adobe programs. And so as you can see, it's double the time to render with Adobe Media Encoder here. Um, but it's the um, same time, uh, 200 milliseconds. Um, uh, faster than um, WinX. Now they do say that they have um, really good um, uh, converting um, engines, things like that. Uh, I do, I'm not sure if that can be trusted because the export time is basically the same uh, and the quality is actually noticeably worse for um, WinX. Uh, so anyway, I'll show you these files. Um, I have them over here. So WinX, um, this is the original. I'll just show you a quick preview of it. And um, uh, here it is. So basically the frame rate's okay uh, and there is, aren't really any bit rates issues. So this is a re-encoded version. At similar quality but it is a bit distorted. Um, but in Adobe Media Encoder we will go to the original and uh, the re-encoded then the quality is a tiny bit better. Um, sorry about the lag. Uh, so if you take a screenshot and use a high-res monitor, you can probably notice the difference, I think. Uh, so um, just zoom in here. Uh, so if you're interested in any of this, um, so basically this is the original here on the top. Uh, so I'll just zoom in. I'm not sure if the zoom in will work. Uh, so anyway, um, just if you're on a Mac, use use Command Zoom or something. Command Scroll, uh, or uh, Control Scroll. So anyway, um, we we'll go back to the program. Uh, this is basically all of the features. Um, now there is a high quality engine. Uh, the high quality engine makes almost no difference, and the file size is basically the same. Uh, you can force audio video sync. Um, doesn't really make much difference, uh, and you can check for new versions. So this program is fairly simple. Um, I think I'd rate it probably about six or seven because the price is fairly high for a program which um, free alternatives um, can probably do better, I think. Um, but of course, um, if you have um, a few DVDs or something that you need to convert and you don't really want to bother um, uh, using Adobe Media Code or something and using uh, complicated um, uh, settings and things, and this is quite a good program because it does have noticeably more profiles and things than something for like um, Adobe Media Encoder um, or Apple Compressor. Actually, Apple Compressor is more actually, um, but it isn't a cheap program. And it's quite high end. Uh, so anyway, there isn't really anything else to say about this program. I've basically um, shown every feature of this. Uh, it supports a few things like DVDs, uh, widescreen, standard TV. Um, uh, so it supports things like NTS. NTSC, um, PAL, and you can change the um, ratio. There's actually quite a major typo here. 
this is DVD aspect radio not ratio they do make a few typos um, uh, especially on their website uh, so anyway thank you for watching this review please rate and comment this video please subscribe and please check out my different um, videos reviews tutorials etc at my channel which is MacMaster4848 uh, so anyway um, uh, just about the giveaway basically you comment you've entered um, so I would uh, it will be good if you subscribe um, uh, just so you can find out the winners and everything uh, and to see new videos um, but um, you don't have to subscribe and you don't have to favorite this video like all the other giveaways